Um, my next question will be about the projects that you are most excited about um, you, and that you're currently working on. So what are mm -hmm. some of the things that you, you would like to share with us? Okay, thanks for, for asking that because it's, it's really nice to reflect back on, um, on work you've done in, in the past, but obviously it's, it is a long time. It's a long time ago. Um, so it's actually really a nice coincidence that um, I've recently had two articles accepted that I, I kind of see as, as my last articles in, in global mobility because to me they, they nicely close a particular area that I've been working on for a while. And I think this is, this is really, really nice to, to close off this, this area. One of them is, is focusing on um, expatriate, sorry, on, on international staffing. And, and that's one that's been recently accepted. It's available in online uh, first um, in organization studies. Um, and it's, it's co-authored with uh, Hunjun Lee and Katsu Yoshikawa, uh, who are two London-based co-authors. Katsu is now back in, in Japan. Um, and we worked on this article for quite a few years to, to kind of struggle to, to get our message across. But in the end, I think uh, we did. And we took a, a, a fresh look at, at how country of origin affects on, on international staffing, looking at at uh, East Asian uh, multinational companies in particular, who were often said to have an ethnocentric uh, staffing practice. So we criticize the use of, of this term ethnocentric and unpack uh, the concept of ethnocentrism. And then we show um, both conceptually and empirically that it's not just a, a country of origins culture, but also its institutional arrangements that impact on staffing and how the institutional arrangements really constrain the firm's capability to translate knowledge across borders. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a really neat uh, way to finish off the, the research I've done on, on staffing. So I've published maybe four or five articles on that, but I thought this was really a nice way to put it in another perspective. And then there's another paper, which also just been accepted and in online first for, uh, for JITS. And that was with um, Hee Jin Kim, um, who um, visited me for a year, a, um, a sabbatical year uh, in London, just before the, the pandemic broke out. And, and Sebastian Reicher, who is um, my former PhD student from the University of Melbourne, although he's long been a professor now. Um, and... Um, we, we, we talk about impatriation, which is not new, but what we do um, is look at how impatriates um, knowledge transfer really can contribute to subsidiary capability building and the evolution of subsidiary roles over time. So we, we, we connect in, impatriation to subsidiary performance, which, mm. which is really new uh, in the field. Yeah. Too. But as I said, I think that's probably done um, for me for, for, for global mobility. I, I really um, am kind of more passionate about other areas um, right now. First of all, um, helping junior academics with, with their research rather than doing research myself. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm doing a lot of that in my role at Middlesex University and, and more broadly. But um, also, and, and this, this chimes in nicely with Wei, um, the, the research I'm still doing is mostly inequality, diversity and inclusion. And, and inclusive research cultures. And, and I focus on female academics in that area. But that's really applied research. So the research um, that I'm doing is, is mostly reading a lot in these areas and then try to develop initiatives, both in my role at Middlesex and in the Signa Women's Network that can help to support uh, female academics. So it's a bit like action uh, research, although probably not properly done. Uh, but yeah, I think more generally what I enjoy most these days is, is, is just trying to shape academic culture. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, 1st of January this year, I launched the, the Positive Academia Initiative, where I like to share positive news. Uh, I know there's lots of things going on in academia that we're not happy with, 
but there are lots of good things going on as well. So I, I share LinkedIn recommendations for my colleagues and mentees and co-authors and share nice stories about things that are going right in academia. And, and I really think that little things like that can, can make a big difference uh, to academics. So if, if there's anyone listening, um, uh, please do join me and, and, and share um, positive news and write recommendations for your colleagues. Um, even if you all just write one, we can make academia a nicer place. Okay, thank you so much, Annabelle. Congrats on those, you know, two, two papers related to global staffing. Uh, we look forward to reading it online um, and in press. And um, thanks for all you do with the, you know, with trying to change the culture of academia, helping, supporting, lifting, elevating uh, female academics. So that's, that's just um, phenomenal. Thanks for doing that.